Sergio Fajardo is here. He was mayor of Medellin, Colombia from 2003 to 2007. For decades, Medellin was ravaged by drug cartels and street gangs. It became known as the murder capital of the world. Now the city has undergone a profound transformation. Violence has plummeted. Economic revival has taken hold. During his tenure, Mayor Fajardo set about healing the city's wounds. He commissioned major construction projects for the city's poorest areas, including schools, community centers, and a new metro rail system. Now he has turned his focus to the national stage. He is preparing a political campaign for the 2010 presidential election. I am pleased to have him at this table for the first time. Welcome. Great Hello. to have you here. I, I should say that I have now known you for four or five days since I saw you speak in, uh -huh. in uh, Monterrey, Mexico, uh, on a program. And I, and I was struck by the idea of the way you were making the presentation, uh, because urban problems are, are an interest of this program and, and, um, and the experience in Medellin. Tell me how you did it. What happened? You were a graduate of the University of Wisconsin here in America with a PhD, right. son of an architect. Uh, so you had an interest in design. Only nine years ago, with a group of friends who were concerned about society, we said, we spent all, all our time saying how society should be. But the politicians are the ones who take the most important decisions in society. So after all these years, we said, we are going to have to get into politics. We created a civic independent movement. We run the elections. We won the election, and once we got into power, we said, now this is the way it's done. So I changed life in the sense that I moved from science, the beautiful mathematical world, into the political world, and then it's when we got there. Now, so we did it outside the traditional political parties. We did the campaigning in a very different way, a set of principles, a proposal for the city, in a way of doing politics, and the way we did it was walking the streets. Nobody charge, will charge you for walking the street, getting in touch with people. Once we got into power, we knew what problems we were going to solve. Deep social inequality with a social historical debt accumulated and a violence that had very deep roots associated with narco-traffic, which was sort of a bomb that we received in our society that shaken the foundations of Medellin and Colombia. So we had a formula to solve the problem. And it's a very easy to state. We said we have to start taking, uh, improving the security condition, reducing violence. But whenever we reduce violence, we immediately have to come up with social interventions. So we had that perfectly clear in our mind. We were reducing violence within Colombia and in Medellin in particular. And then we had the social intervention program which was associated with education and the student abroad sense as the engine of the social transformation. And we brought in architecture so that we will go to the poorest place and change the skin of the city. And that meant where we had destruction, we built the most beautiful buildings we have ever built in our city. In the poorest neighborhoods, you built the most beautiful buildings? The most beautiful buildings because we always thought the most beautiful thing for the humblest people, which is a message of its social inclusion. So suddenly in those places where there was no hope, we were building these incredible spaces, but all were related to opportunities, park libraries, schools, cultural centers, and all these spaces, spaces for example, the spaces for entrepreneurship at the social level. So we were having these social programs put together where there was no hope, as I said, and the architecture was a perfect tool to change our minds, to show that there is a way we can move in one direction, and that was very powerful to change in our people's attitudes and creating hope. Yeah, but did you first have to create the rule of law? Did you right. first have to create order before you could do these kinds of things? Right. Shall I tell you how? Please. Within the national context, and I understand you have had President Uribe here, Colombia has decreased violence. We have improved in security matters. So once we got into Medellin, there had been a national improvement. There was a very difficult reintegration process of paramilitary who had signed a treaty with the national government. And what we did was the following. Here is our city. There should be no place in the city that is ruled by somebody outside the state. So the first thing that we had to do work was work with the police force. 
I always tell this story where I said, I never thought in my life that I would work with a policeman. I never thought in my life that out of my mouth would come the expression, we need more policemen. But we understood the problem. We knew what we, were ha what we had to solve, so we sat to work with the police force, which has improved in Colombia quite a lot. And we looked at piece by piece in the city, understanding the social conditions in, sec in each sector and the trouble that we had with gangs or drug trafficking and so on. So we had a comprehensive plan. Then we had the reintegration process. A lot of people who had demobilized due to the accord that the national government had had with the paramilitary and narco traffickers. And we said we had to build on this opportunity because these kids, these guys were born here. And after the violence that we have had some, for so many years, that's what turned out to have in the city. So we began pulling many of them outside that world. So when we did that, those two things together, violence decreased. But right away, immediately, we came with the social opportunities. So we will change destruction and we will translate that into opportunities. And that's what we did. What was you, how much did you increase the education budget? 40% of our budget was related to education and the student that brought sense. 40% of the city's 40 budget for 40. education? Our education and the student abroad sense, what I mean, schools, for example, we build this interactive science park, the cultural centers, and all these new buildings. For example, we built the most beautiful schools in the poorest sectors in town, which were the most violent ones. And so that the poorest kid in the city of Medellin would attend a school as good as the one that would be attended by the richest kid. And you built transportation to these neighborhoods as well. And there was a very novel transportation system, sort of a cable system which became a public transportation way of moving people around. It began in the former, the previous administration before I came. Then we finished that. We built another one. And that opened up the door to come into neighborhoods that nobody would dare to go there. Nobody would think about putting a foot in there. So we opened up the space. So what we said is violence has terrible consequences all over. One of those is that violence splits society in smaller groups. So instead of becoming citizens, we are fearful of other people within the city. We are restricted. So what we did was we create this new public space so where we are going to get together. But it's public space. It's the presence of the whole society in a place where no, they didn't see this hand of the state of society. So suddenly we turn down the buildings, the, the walls that were separating us, and we start getting to see each other, moving to places that we haven't worked before. And that's the way we are improving the conditions, and that's the mechanism that we have been putting forward. And little by little, Medellin is getting better, and with difficulties, of course, violence hasn't disappeared, but we have changed course and say we can move in that direction. And you're now running for president? Yes, we are. You're ready. Is he going to run or not? I have no idea, and I, as we always say, we are not pro-River nor against River. We have a different way of He's doing He's a former politics. mayor of Medellin. He was a mayor of Medellin and the governor of the state of Antioquia, and nobody knows whether he's going to run or not. I have been, I have said it publicly, that I don't think it's a good idea to have another re-election. In spite of his achievements, that, would be, that wouldn't be good for democracy. But whatever happens, what we are doing is we are doing our way of building in Colombia. We, wa we walk throughout the cities. We talk differently. We open up a new way of doing politics, and we have a different view. So whether he runs or not, it doesn't matter because we are doing it. We run. Whether he runs or not, you're going ahead with your campaign. Sure, because we do politics by conviction, not by calculation.